International Monetary Fund projects Nigeria's GDP to grow by minus 3.4% in 2020. And the federal government provides waivers for MSMEs to strive during the COVID-19 propelled lockdown. Just as oil prices slum as market faces lowest demand in 25 years. This is Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Amina Nujem. Glad to have you join us on the program today. The International Monetary Fund IMF said on Tuesday that it expects Sub-Saharan Africa's gross domestic product to contract by 1.6% this year, compared to 3.1% growth in 2019, as the coronavirus pandemic wrecks the region's economies. Here is a highlight of the World Economic Outlook by the IMF. Various African governments have imposed lockdowns and curfews to curb the spread of coronavirus. But the restrictions are putting pressure on most economies, some of which are already in recession. Under the assumption that the COVID-19 pandemic and required containment peaks in the second quarter for most countries in the world and recedes in the second half of 2020, the fund projects the global growth in 2020 to fall to minus 3%. Now, this is a downgrade from 6.3 percentage points from January 2020, a major revision over a very short period of time as presented by the IMF's chief economist. This makes the Great Lockdown the worst recession since the Great Depression in 1930 and far worse than the global financial crisis. The IMF in its World Economic Outlook says that Nigeria's GDP forecast will fall 3.4 percent this year after growing 2.2% in 2019. And Dr. Mohamed Sanibello, a senior lecturer of the accounting department of the Kaduna State University, is our guest on Business Express today. He joins us via our Kaduna Network Center to discuss IMS projected slowdown fueled by the coronavirus pandemic and how best to possibly get the economy out of the woods. Hello, Doctor. Uh, thank you. All right. Um, now, Doctor, the IMF has just released an outlook like you saw in that report with projections of weaker economies and a projection of a fall of 3% 3 per, 3 Now, coming back to Africa, we have a projected growth of minus 3.4% Now, all these numbers being thrown around, what do you make of them? Well, uh, thank you very much. Actually, when you look at um, the numbers, they tend to tell us that we are really in a bad shape for 2020 uh, globally. So what is um, on ground is not peculiar to Nigeria or to sub-Saharan Africa. However, um, if you put it in terms of money, the total uh, loss in the world economy will amount to about nine trillion dollars, which put together is more than the economy of Japan and Germany combined. So this is very serious, and uh, it is clear from the IMF uh, report that this matter uh, is worse than the 2008-2009 uh, financial crisis. So. 
Um, it's a global issue, and uh, Nigeria is not insulated. In fact, uh, for Nigeria, if you look at um, the fact that for Sub-Saharan Africa, it is just 1.6 minus, but for Nigeria, it is uh, up to 3.4 minus. Now, uh, why, how do we get here? Uh, that is in the case of Nigeria. I want to attribute this to three Im important uh, factors. Number one, there is the issue of um, the low price of oil. Everyone knows that Nigeria's economy is largely dependent on oil. And once there is a problem with the oil price, then the whole economy uh, would, uh, would not be able to absorb the shock. Secondly, the coronavirus. The coronavirus is here, and um, nobody has planned for it. And it is, uh, we, we, in fact, uh, one would say that we, are, we thank God Almighty and uh, the, the government uh, response to the virus has been uh, very commendable. Because uh, if you look at even our neighboring countries, they tend to have more cases than, uh, than we have recorded. And uh, hopefully that we would ever record uh, during this period. So coronavirus is a factor. Then the third factor has to do with the uh, fact that we are just, Nigeria just coming out of uh, uh, another recession. Well, just uh, over, I mean, it's only last year that we began to see positive um, uh, results from the recession which uh, set in immediately after the 2015 uh, general election. So if you look at all this, uh, these three factors, this is why we are here in Nigeria, and then our, our record by IMF's uh, projection is higher than the sub-Saharan African average. Uh, this is this. All right, um, Dr. Mohammed, you have um, already highlighted some of the underlining factors that were responsible for the shock and um, bringing together the COVID-19 issue on ground, it was a not too pleasant experience. Now, aside the shock, the IMF is raising concern about um, Sub-Saharan Africa, one of the points which you highlighted, having a mono economy. Now, also with a large informal sector living possibly day to day, within the short and long term, how do you see this playing out? I, I think um, what we need to do, already the IMF has, is projecting that uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is going to move to about 4.1 by 2021. Uh, but for Nigeria, it is going to be 2.4 by 2021. That means um, even in terms of the recovery, Nigeria is going to fall short of the Sub-Saharan African uh, average. Um, Nigeria, in, as a country, has a peculiar situation. Um, we, we still are battling with issues relating to infrastructure. We are battling with issues relating to you know, corruption. We are still battling with other issues you know, of um, test for foreign goods. So if you put this, all this together, that is why our average Either in in, the, in terms of the positive average we are we are below, and in terms of the negative average we, we are higher. Um, so what we will need as, uh, to face seriously in order to combat this um, um, very serious challenge is to go back and uh, redouble efforts in those areas that we've been lacking, and which in effect have brought us to this uh, current situation. This is, this is uh, what, we, what we need to do uh, very seriously. Uh, I, I will say that uh, very seriously, we need to do much more. Now, Dr. Mohamed, something um, comes to mind. Various governments have imposed some kind of restrictions and lockdown. Do you think um, African economies can do well without such restrictions, given the number of cases on the continent? 
security restrictions uh, are very necessary because we, we have seen it has worked. This uh, coronavirus started in China, as we all know, and uh, the efforts made by China or the decision to lock down the area affected or mostly affected has shown uh, that that is the best way to go. We need isolation, and the medical experts have already told us what we need to do in order to control or prevent the spread of the, the, the virus. So we wouldn't do any other option. The, the only option is to do exactly what has worked in other places. And China has been a good example. Countries that have not done exactly what China did, and uh, probably at the initial stage took the whole matter with some kind of levity, uh, we, we have seen what, uh, what has led them to. Uh, we have seen the increase, sharp increase in the number of cases and uh, also with a corresponding uh, number of deaths. So Nigeria and Africa cannot afford, and especially given our low you know, um, infrastructure in terms of uh, the, the health facilities, I mean, we have fewer uh, uh, medical personnel, so we cannot really uh, refuse to lock down. This lockdown is a necessity. That is what the experts have advised, and that is what has worked elsewhere. So I, I think uh, we are on the right track to do some kind of uh, lockdown, and we should continue with the lockdown until experts agree that it is time, you know, to reopen. Okay, Dr. Mohamed, you're talking about um, doing the right thing. The IMF um, is talking about homegrown um, solutions for economies in this um, peculiar situation. You've already highlighted some of it in the health sector. Are there any other homegrown solutions within the Nigerian context? Uh, in Nigeria, uh, first of all, let us uh, have a common understanding about what this uh, homegrown is all about. Homegrown means coming up with strategies or proposals that takes care of our local peculiarity as a nation, and then there is a sufficient buy-in by the people. So, which means um, it's, it's. I mean, the way it has to evolve would be that. Every stakeholder is on the same page. Now, once we understand that as the homegrown uh, strategy, the next thing is for us to look at what and what, I mean, where, which are the areas that we, we need to really focus more attention on. Uh, generally, we have three areas. We have the macroeconomic uh, front. I mean, there are certain things that we need to do that are peculiar to our economy, we have to look at the structure, you know, the structural, our, our, our structure, financial services, every other component that has to do with that. Then we have to be specific also with regards to sectors. Now, these three areas, once we pick each one of, you know, these three areas, we'll be able to say, okay, um, what do we need to do that, are, that is Nigerian? Um, I mean, in terms of thinking, that is Nigerian in terms of uh, uh, specification and peculiarity, and that can also, I mean, uh, uh, certify as uh, a standard, uh, because uh, we, you, we cannot, as Nigeria, decide on anything that is below the standard, below the uh, established benchmark in terms of way of doing it. Okay, so, now, now um, Dr. Mohammed, there's also this issue of uh, monetary policy supportive framework to support government um, physical positions. Now, particularly for Nigeria, what sort of collaboration do you expect? I think um, what we need to, to do, really, um, we have, uh, has, has been, um, le le let me say, the, the administration of the, the government, in a sense, has started it. Like, if you look at the kind of stimulus, the package, which the government is already, you know, trying to put uh, before uh, Nigerians in terms of trying to stimulate uh, growth, trying to stimulate the economy, um, trying to reschedule debts, trying to reduce uh, interest rates, all this will together help in 
developing the homegrown solution to the current um, economic uh, downturn. Now, specifically with regards to um, the, 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 the fiscal uh, component, now, whatever governments need to do to keep inflation low, it is very important. Um, Dr. Mohamed Sanibello, a senior lecturer of the accounting department of the Kaduna State University, thank you so much for your insight and thanks for joining us today on the program. Business Express continues after this timeout. Let me assure Nigerians that all COVID-19 intervention funds are safe in the Treasury single account and the government is still open to donations in this regard. Government has opened special accounts with five commercial banks which are directly linked to the Treasury single account. Donated funds are safe in the Central Bank of Nigeria. For verifiable information about the funds and other financial obligations of the federal government, please contact us directly at the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The account details for the donations are as follows. Now, the federal government is providing a waiver for small-scale businesses to continue to strive during the lockdown period. Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment has also been directed to come up with the modalities that will ensure that producers of food, water and other pharmaceutical consumables have free access to raw and byproducts during this period. Consequently, a situation room has been established to monitor production and distribution of essential commodities across the country. So the fertilizer get to the farmers so that the, food, uh, uh, the harvest of this year is disrupted by this uh, pandemic. So government is doing a lot to make sure that all these things are uh, moving very well. And in our ministry, we're doing our very best to see to it that. The mandate of this uh, emergency operations center is to facilitate the sustainability of production of essential commodities during the COVID-19 pandemic, facilitate the unhindered delivery of essential commodities across the country, especially the points of critical need during the pandemic, Thirdly, to facilitate the sustained supply of raw materials, another critical input for manufacturing of essential commodities, including imported materials, as well as expedite their clearance at the various ports and airports. The fourth mandate of this committee is to ensure strict compliance by all personnel of all the extant COVID-19 prevention and control guidelines released by the Federal Ministry of Health and the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, at all points of production, delivery, and retail across the nation. Now, the 50 billion Naira monetary stimulus put in place by the Central Bank of Nigeria to cushion the effect of COVID-19 on household and SMEs is ready for disbursement to beneficiaries. Benny Adams reports that the applicants are to pay no fees for processing and the funds will be disbursed by Nassau Microfinance Bank. Part of the federal government stimulus package through the CBN is a 50 billion targeted credit facility for households and micro, small and medium enterprises affected by the pandemic. Procedures for accessing the fund, the CBN says, has been clearly spelt out and includes non-payment of application processing fees. Business plan is no longer a mandatory requirement. Another NISA or central bank charge application fee for loan access through COVID-19 intervention form by central bank and NASA microfinance bank welcome application from credible businesses and households to mitigate the effect of COVID-2019 and consequently according to our set business plan people provide or submit independently. I'm assuring you that the Central Bank of Nigeria is resolved, fully resolved, and that National MMAB is fully resolved to push on with this program, to help our families, households, 
and small businesses. They emphasized that applicants with business plans stand better chances of benefiting. The guidelines indicate that the fund avail households up to 3 million naira and SMEs up to 25 million naira with evidence of cash flow up to three years to show capacity for repayment. The minus 1.6% outlook for sub-Saharan Africa in the medium term will have to be addressed by homegrown macroeconomic policies as the coronavirus pandemic will spare no country in the region. Speaking on the outlook, Abebe Salasi, Director Africa Department for IMF, says the fund is looking to assist low-income countries in the region through the grants and debt service restructuring to give give them more fiscal space for repayment, Speak, speaking specifically on Nigeria while responding to questions by NTA, Abebe said Nigeria in the medium term will need to prioritize revenue mobilization, developmental spending and spend no resource in building up the health sector of the nation. Meanwhile, oil prices received an initial boost after the Global Production Cut Agreement, but dropped to $20 threshold in early trading this Wednesday. Markets have become skeptical about the size of the cut and the likelihood of it leading to a demand and supply balance. Brent, which rose to $32 per barrel some days earlier, dropped by 5% to $28 Wednesday morning, while U.S. oil slid to $19.20 a barrel. Experts say Nigeria, most likely oil producers, is having to grapple with falling prices and a reduced production quota, which will make 2020 a very difficult year. Let's now see how oil and other commodities are faring this Wednesday in the market in Nigeria and across the globe. And um, reports from the Nigerian equities market show that the market gained by 3.02%, with the OSHA index closing at 22,539.94 basis points, with a volume of trade of 326.4 million, valued at 3.3 billion naira. In the top trades were FMBH, Zenith Bank, and Guarantee Trust Bank, while the top gainers were Dangote Cement, Nigerian Breweries, and GTB. And how are stocks outside Nigeria faring as they weigh on global economic impact of coronavirus? Here is a summary by Benny Adams. European stocks fell Wednesday as markets weigh global economic impact of coronavirus. The stocks also experienced a pause after a five-day winning streak as oil prices tumble. The French CAC 40 dropped 1.95%, Germany DAX down by 2.13%, while the FTSE declined by 2.18%. Meanwhile, in the U.S., stock futures were in positive territory, with Dow Jones Industrial Average futures up by 2.39 percent, the S&P 500 up by 3.06 percent, and the Nasdaq 3.95 percent. Asian Pacific markets, little change as IMF flags risks of severe global recession. Japan's Nikkei dropped by 0.45% in morning trading, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng dips minus 1.19%, as well as the Shanghai Composite posting 2,811.17 basis points, dipping 0.57%. Back home in Africa, the equities market was mostly dominated by the beers, the South Africa JSC, Africa Top 40, Kenya's Nairobi All Share Index, 
and Namibia overall index were all in negative territory. Tunisia Tun Index show advancement of 0.55%, while Ghana GSE Composite Index stood at 2,134.04 basis points. Time now to go over to the morning market to see how the Naira is faring alongside other major currencies. This is the point where we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed all previous episodes are available on NTA's YouTube channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is NTA News Now. Don't forget the hashtag BizX. Remember to always wash your hand with soap under running water or use a sanitizer as the world battles COVID-19. Be safe out there. Business Express returns on Friday. Thank you for your time.